While he's doing that, I have a photograph in my hand, and I found it in my dad's Bible. I didn't know it was there. It fell out on the pulpit when I had his Bible here the other night. Sunday night, I believe I had the Bible. And here's a photograph of the Waters family in the early 80s. If any of you would like to take a look at it, you will find some very young-looking children here <laughs> and some young-looking parents, too. So anyway, if you'd like to look at this, it's going to be up here after the service. Now, normally, I have a, a, quite a few comments before I give you the gift of mercy, but let me just read Romans 12 and read the paper tonight. We've uh, expanded, expanded our time with different things tonight. So let me just stick to the paper, if you don't mind. And I think we finished the uh, gifts, the seven gifts of the Spirit tonight. So let's look at, we finished several things. We finished the doctrine of Christ on uh, this past Sunday night. And I believe we're going to finish the spiritual gifts tonight. So let's read from Romans chapter 12. Uh, for as, this is verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Our ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Tonight the theme was on mercy. At Calvary says mercy. There was grace, and grace was free. And then we sang, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. And so on. Read Psalms 89. I also said, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. So the mercy was the theme. Then we'll begin with verse 9. And verse 9 goes up to the gift of prophecy. If you remember, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. That is parallel to the gift of prophecy. And it goes on down the line, so I'll not make that reference over and over. But each one of these verses goes back and references one of those gifts. Be kindly affectioned one to another, with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. So you can go back up and see that goes right there in the ministry, or we call that uh, serving. And then he that exhorteth uh, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, that's the exhorter. Distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality, and so on. That's giving. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep, and so on. So we're going to find those things that are very pertinent to each other as we get into this and follow it up. And then here's the rest of the chapter. Not read all of it, but it's all the same mind. Here we go. Start it out. Many members, one body, end up in verse 16, same mind, one toward another, and so on. So now let me just read the paper because of time, and uh, we've almost run out of it. Who in Scripture best illustrates the motivational gift of mercy? That's John. John had the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and what other book? Mm -hmm. Thank you. What guidelines are given for the gift of mercy? Romans 12, 15. Weep with and rejoice with. In other words, whichever the person is doing, that's what we need to do. Uh, what basic principle does the one with the gift of mercy most need to exercise? Moral freedom. Why is this true? It protects the one with the gift of mercy from improper relationships. So right away, the author of this is saying the one with the gift of mercy is often drawn into 
bad relationships with one person or another. They think somebody needs help. And that someone that needs help may be detrimental to their spirituality. And it may be even the wrong, the opposite sex or something like that. Characteristics of the gift. Deeply loyal to friends. A person with a gift of mercy will demonstrate loyalty to a friend by even reacting harshly toward those who attack him. When the Apostle John watched the Samaritans reject Jesus, whom he loved, John wanted to call down fire from heaven to consume them. Now, I want to jump over to tendencies, taking up offenses. Look at the next page or turn the page over, and you'll see the taking up offenses. Now, I'm not sure which psalm that I, this is in, and there's a verse for it, and I can find it for you. But basically, here's what taking up offenses means. Let's just say that Paul saw me do Bob wrong. Now, I would never think of that, Bob. You know that. But let's just say Paul observed me doing something to Bob that I shouldn't be doing. Maybe blessing him out, whatever. Or telling him he was wrong about something. Bob, I'd never think to do that. But Paul saw it. And Paul would say, I'm so mad at that preacher. And he would get more involved, if he has the gift of mercy, he would get more involved in the offense than Bob. And I might go to Bob and say, Bob, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. shouldn't have said a word. Uh, and I apologize. Me and Bob get it all patched up. But Paul over here is saying, I'm going to get him. And he tells people right and left, that preacher did this and he did that and he said he took up, and this is one with have the gift of mercy, Paul. I'm not talking about you, one that has the gift of mercy. And he carries the offense. I have known people, and I know I need to read the paper, but I have known people that have carried offenses that somebody else has done. They didn't, they were not the ones hurt. It was somebody else that was hurt. They picked it up and carried it the rest of their life. Sounds like the Hatfields and McCoys, doesn't it? That's exactly what it sounds like. One with the gift of mercy tends to do that. He sees somebody that may be wronged by some organization or some person or something and carries that like a, uh, I don't know, the word I'm trying to say is uh, like it's his goal in life to free them from that wrong, whatever. All right, let me continue on. I'm talking too much, I can tell that. Need for deep friendship. The very nature of a person with a gift of mercy requires close friendships. In fact, they think people are just mean and stubborn and unfriendly if they don't get real close. However, must have mutual commitment, which is often reaffirmed. John enjoyed such a friendship with Christ. You notice it was, Christ, it was John and Christ. He's the one that leaned on the bosom of Christ. He was the one that was said, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Empathize with hurting people. The gift of mercy enables the one having it to sense which individuals are hurting and to share the pain with them. Along with the pain, a mercy senses the full scope of emotions. John wrote his first epistle to give joy, fellowship, hope, and confidence and to cast out fear and torment. Decisions, and I, I got these verses, but I'll just have to leave them off tonight. Decisions based on benefits. Those with the gift of mercy find it hard to be firm because they do not want to offend other people. Can I tell you something? I want, I want to make this real clear. You've, the politicians say that all the time, and when they say it, they're lying every single time. Say, I want to make this real clear, and then they, they tell a big lie. But I want to make this real clear. Can you? This is terrible. This, this is awful. They will not make Christ first in decisions. They will put the feelings of other people first. And when you put people's feelings above Christ, something's wrong. Right? It's the Christ of the Bible that makes the difference that's the judge of the situation. But the 
the person with the gift of mercy, and I'm getting on the negative side of it, but the person with the gift of mercy will just gloss over it and think whatever they feel, that's what I need to do. Deeply sensitive, decisions based on benefits, and uh, when John was faced with denying you, he demonstrated a boldness, and this is, a, this is new. Here's John, and uh, John is making a bold uh, witness and the and I've got this scripture down, but you'll have to read it. The Sadducees they knew John, and they knew John was kind of soft and tender, and John acted boldly in this situation in Acts four thirteen, and they were surprised at John. So the one with the gift of mercy needs to learn boldness at the right time. Deeply sensitive to loved ones, the gift of mercy carries with it the ability to sense genuine love. It therefore. If, I think if, if, carries a greater vulnerability to deeper and more frequent hurts from those who fail to demonstrate sincere love. John uses the word love more than any other disciple in his gospel and epistles. Attract people in distress. One with the gift of mercy has a deep understanding of people. I don't know if any of you pick up stray cats or stray dogs, but you may have the gift of mercy if you do. Somebody's looking around. <laughs> attract people in distress okay so here, never mind I gotta go this sensitivity caused those with hurts to be drawn to him and to confide in him when Christ died he transferred responsibility for his grieving mother not to Peter great spokesman for the church he gave the responsibility of his mother to John who had the gift of mercy Desire to remove hurts, whereas an exhorter will try to help a person. That's Peter now. Whereas an exhorter will try to help a person find a benefit from his hurts. A fellow down the street is having many problems. He's got a tree on top of his house, two trees on his house. And, uh, and I told him right off the get-go, I said, hey, and I'm helping him resolve some of the issues and get people to help. And I said, right off the get-go, and he reminded me of this. I told him, I said, you're probably going to come out better than you were. He said, that's exactly the gift. That's what the exhorter says. You're going to learn from your pain. You're going to get better because of it. You're going to have all these problems, but you're going to get better. That's the exhorter. Gift of mercy doesn't see it that way at all. The message, uh, the, mer the person with the gift of mercy tries to remove the pain or remove the source of it. The message of John's first epistle was for Christians to stop hurting and hating each other. Love your brother. If you don't love your brother, you're not saved. That's what basically he said. Measure acceptance by closeness. There's that closeness. It keeps coming in. A person with a gift of mercy tends to need physical closeness in order to be reassured of acceptance. The closest includes rich times of fellowship. John sought out the closest place to Christ at the Last Supper and leaned upon the Lord. He his need for physical closeness may also have prompted his request to sit next to Christ in glory. You know, some of these rascals have treated John like he was some kind of pervert. I want you to know something. That's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. John was a Christian gentleman with the gift of mercy. He was definitely not what some people have made him out to be. By the way, the Olympics should be ashamed of what they did in the last Olympics. Shouldn't they? Should totally be ashamed. <clears throat> they apologize, but that's not much. That's not no, nowhere close to enough. Anyway, attracted to prophets. Uh, are you kidding me? Can you believe this? A person with a gift of mercy may marry a prophet. What in the world for? <laughs> They're almost totally opposite. But it happens. Opposites attract in the gifts. That's a, that's a fact. And that's what's happening next in the... Okay. Uh, the firm truth of the prophet is just balanced. The firm truth of the prophet is balanced with the gentle love of mercy. John spent more time with Peter than any other disciple. Peter, bold spokesman, doctrine, truth. John, love, 
compassion, empathy. And here's a misuse of the gift, and I've already mentioned taking up offenses, becoming possessive. Ooh. Sometimes they love and empathize and sympathize simply to be the controller of the person instead of really wanting to help them. A deep need for commitment to a close friendship can cause those with gift of mercy to monopolize the time and attention of others. As he experiences disappointments in one friendship, the mercy tends to place greater demands on new friendship. Boom, boom, bounce, bounce from this one to that one. Oh, that one wasn't friendly enough, and they quit loving me, so they don't love me anymore, so I go to somebody else that does love me. Hmm. Tolerating evil. Those with the gift of mercy do not have spiritual discernment as to why people suffer. They may give sympathy and encouragement to those who are suffering. And by the way, I don't want you to think that these, when I say these bad things, I don't want to give a hard, the person with the gift of mercy a hard time. Because the gift of mercy is definitely necessary. And I've got many verses and comments to show how necessary mercy is. By the way, if we didn't have the mercy of God, where would we be? So I don't want you to think for one minute that I'm denigrating mercy. But one with the gift of prophecy would probably do that. The one with the gift of mercy can learn discernment by seeing people through the eyes of the other's spiritual gifts. They have a discernment. Failing to be firm, when a person with the gift of mercy is given a position of leadership, he would tend to avoid disciplinary action, which is needed. Don't make them a principal of a school. Not very. Sometimes they don't do good in teaching. They don't have good discipline as a teacher either. As a result, but they can though. They can be some of the best teachers. I know some with a gift of mercy who have good discipline, and they make the best teachers. As a result, the person who should have been disciplined is not brought to repentance. You know why they have good discipline? Because they love and discipline at the same time. Do you know that's so important in discipline? Love and discipline. Whew. Boy, I'm getting on all kinds of things here. Leaning on emotions versus reason. Because those with gift of mercy have such sensitive feeling, they tend to base their decision on emotion rather than on principles. Their subjective reasoning can easily cause them, I think that's a mistype, cause them to reject biblical doctrines which seem harsh to them. Do you know some of the new churches, they say, we don't want any doctrine. You know why? Somebody involved in that process has the gift of mercy and says, we don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to offend anybody. Defrauding the opposite sex, and this comes into the picture as well. You get too close. Reacting to God's purposes. Unlike exhorters who look at suffering as a means of receiving more grace and growing spiritually, those with the gift of mercy tend to react to the idea that God would allow a good person to suffer. Unless the person with the gift of mercy maintains a proper perspective, he can easily become bitter toward God. Have you ever seen a bitter believer? Anybody ever seen a bitter believer? Most miserable, most miserable Christian ever. Probably they have the gift of mercy, but never learned the shortcoming of the gift of mercy. Failing to show deference when a person with the gift of mercy demands physical closeness to a, in a friendship, he may fail to consider the desires of others who need that person's time and attention. For this reason, John was gently reproved for his request to be next to Jesus in his kingdom. Cutting off insensitive people, a person whose words and actions reflect insens insensitivity to the feelings of other people will be quickly recognized and reacted to one by one with the gift of mercy. Rather than trying to help this insensitive person, the mercy will tend to close off his spirit and cut off fellowship. I'm just not going to have anything to do with them anymore. All right. I'm going to give you one comment, and I'm going to close. This is on the mercy of God. From Thiessen's lectures in systematic theology, the nature of God and essence of his attributes, we are to 
grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and we are to be like him and he is also God listen to this by the mercy of God we mean his goodness manifested toward those who are in misery or distress compassion pity and loving kindness are other terms in scripture that denote practically the same thing mercy is an eternal necessary quality in God as an all perfect being but the exercise of it in a given case is optional to deny the freeness of mercy is to annihilate it for if it is a matter of debt then it is no longer mercy it requires a special revelation before we can say that it will be exercised in a specific case the scriptures represent God as rich in mercy Ephesians 2 4 but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us and as full of pity and merciful James 5 11, behold we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. I gotta stop, but I got more. Are you glad we have the mercy of God? Let's pray.